Kitties, no neck monsters. Because they've got no necks. Their fat little heads are set on their fat little bodies without any visible connection. Hear them? Hear them screaming? I tell you, I got so nervous at that dinner table tonight, I thought I would throw back my head and utter a scream you could hear across the Arkansas border. Well, I want you to know, Big Daddy hadn't been at that table for more than two minutes with those five no-neck monsters slobbering and drooling over their food before he threw down his fork and shouted, For God's sakes, Goober, why don't you put them pigs in a trough in the kitchen? I swear, I simply could have died. Think of it, Brick. They've got five of them, and number six is coming. Why, they brought the whole bunch of them down here, like animals, to display at a county fair. What they have those children doing tricks all the time, along with constant little remarks and innuendos about the fact that you and I have not produced any children, are totally childless and therefore totally useless. Of course, it's comical, but it's also disgusting since it's so obvious what they're up to. What are they up to, Maggie? I'll tell you what they're up to, boy of mine. They're up to cutting you out of your father's estate. And now we know the Big Daddy's dying of cancer. Do we? Do we what? No, Big Daddy is dying of cancer. Got the report today. Oh. Yep. Got the report just now. It didn't surprise me, baby. I recognized the symptoms soon as we got here last spring. And I'm willing to bet you that Brother Man and his wife were pretty sure about it, too. Which more than likely explains why their usual summer migration to the coolness of the Great Smokies was passed up this summer in favor of hustling down here with their whole screaming tribe. And why so many illusions have been made to Rainbow Hill lately. You know what Rainbow Hill is, baby? A place that's famous for treating alcoholics and dope fiends in the movies. I am not in the movies. No, and you don't take dope. Otherwise, you're a perfect candidate for Rainbow Hill, baby. And that's where they aim to ship you. Over my dead body. But nothing would please them more than they could get a hold of the purse strings and dole out remittances, cut off our credit, wherever, whenever he wanted. How do you like that, baby? Well, you've been doing everything you can to aid and abet them in this scheme of theirs. Quitting work. Devoting yourself to the occupation of drinking. Breaking your ankle last night on the high school athletic field. Doing what? Jumping hurdles at two or three o'clock in the morning. Got in the newspapers, human interest story about a well-known former athlete staging a one-man track meet on the Glorious Hill High School athletic field but was slightly out of condition and didn't clear the first hurdle. Brother Man Gooper claims he exercised his influence to keep it from going out over the AP and the UP and every other damn P. But, Brick, you still have one big advantage. You say something, Maggie? Big Daddy dotes on you, honey. And he can't stand Brother Man and that monster fertility may. Know how I know? By little expressions that flicker over his face when that woman is holding forth on one of her choice topics, such as 
how she refused twilight sleep when the twins were delivered because she believes motherhood's an experience that ought to be experienced fully in order to fully appreciate the wonder and the beauty of it all. Huh, producing those no-neck monsters. I think Daddy shares my attitude toward those two. And as for me, well, I give him a laugh now and then and he tolerates me. As a matter of fact, I sometimes suspect Big Daddy harbors a little unconscious lech for me. What makes you think that Big Daddy harbors a lech for you, Maggie? Well, he always drops his eyes down my body when I'm talking to him. Drops his eyes down to my boobs and licks his old chops. That kind of talk is disgusting. Did anyone ever tell you you're a back-breaking Puritan brick? I think it's mighty fine that that old fella on the doorstep of death still takes in my shape with what I think is deserved appreciation. You want to know something else? Big Daddy didn't even know how many little maize and goopers have been produced. And when they informed him that they had five already and number six was coming, the news seemed to come as a sort of unpleasant surprise. Yes. Your brother Gooper still cherishes the illusion he took a giant step up on the social ladder when he married Miss May Flynn of the Memphis Flynns. Well, I have a piece of Spanish news for Gooper. The Flynns never had a thing in this world but money, and they lost that. They were nothing at all but fairly successful climbers. As for May having been the cotton carnival queen, as they remind us so often, lest we forget. That's one honor I don't envy her for. Sit on a brass throne on a tacky float and ride down Main Street, smiling and bowing and blowing kisses to all the trash on the street. Why, a year before last, when Susan McFeeters was singled out for that honor, you know what happened to her? You know what happened to poor little Susie McFeeters? No, uh, what happened to... Poor little Susie McFeeters. Somebody spit tobacco juice in her face. Somebody spit tobacco juice in her face. That's right. Some old drunk leaned out of a window in the Hotel Gayoso and yelled, Hey there, hey, hey there, Queenie. Poor Susie looked up and flashed him a radiant smile, and he shot a squirt of tobacco juice right in poor Susie's face. Well, what do you know about that? What do I know about it? I was there. I saw it. Must have been kind of funny. Poor Susie didn't think so. Had hysterics. Screamed like a banshee. They had to stop the parade, get her off her run. Why are you looking at me like that? Like what, Maggie? The way you were looking at me just now, before I caught your eye in the mirror and you started to whistle. I don't know how to describe it, but it froze my blood. I've caught you so often looking at me like that lately. What are you thinking of when you look at me like that? I wasn't conscious of looking at you, Maggie. Well, I was conscious of it. What were you thinking? I don't remember thinking anything, Maggie. Don't you think I know? Don't you think I know? Know what? That I've gone through this hideous transformation become hard frantic cruel that's what you've been observing in me lately <laughs> how could you help but observe it well that's all right i'm not thin-skinned anymore <laughs> can't afford to be thin-skinned anymore but brick brick you say something, Maggie? I was gonna say something. That I get lonely. Very. Everybody gets that. Living with someone you love can be lonelier than living entirely alone if the one that you love doesn't love you. Would you like to live alone, Maggie? No. God, I wouldn't. Did 
you have a nice bed? Uh huh. Was the water cool? No. But it made you feel fresh, huh? Fresh, sure. I know something that would make you feel much fresher. What, Megan? An alcohol rub or cologne. A rub with cologne. Well, that's good after a workout, Maggie, but I haven't been working out much lately. You've kept in good shape, though. You think so, Maggie? I always thought drinking men lost their looks, but I was plainly mistaken. Well, thanks, Maggie. You're the only drinking man I know. It never seems to put fat on. I'm getting softer, Maggie. Well, sooner or later, it's bound to soften you up. It's just beginning to soften up Skipper when... I'm sorry. I never could keep my fingers off a sore. I wish you would lose your looks. No such luck. I actually think you've gotten better looking since you've gone on the bottle. Of course... You always had that detached quality, that rare sort of charm, the charm of the defeated. You look so cool, so cool, so enviably cool. They're playing croquet. The moon's appeared, and it's white, just beginning to turn a little bit yellow. You were a wonderful lover. And I think mostly because you were really indifferent to it. Isn't that right? Never had any anxiety about it. Did it naturally, easily, with absolute confidence and perfect calm. <laughs> More like opening a door for a lady or seating her at a table than giving expression to any longing for. You know, if I thought that you would never, never, never make love to me again, I would go downstairs to the kitchen and pick out the longest, sharpest knife I could find and stick it straight into my heart. I swear that I would. Watch out. You're gonna miss it. You just don't know. But one thing I don't have is the charm of the defeated. My hat is still in the ring, and I'm determined to win. Later tonight. I'm going to tell you that I love you. And maybe by that time you'll be drunk enough to believe me. <sighs> They're playing croquet. Big Daddy's dying of cancer. What were you thinking of when I caught you looking at me like that? Were you thinking of Skipper? Maggie. Oh, excuse me. Forgive me, but laws of silence don't work. No, laws of silence don't work. Give me my crutch. Lean on me. No, just give me my crutch. Lean on my shoulder. I don't want to lean on your shoulder. Now give me my crutch. All right, all right. Here it is. Take it. Thanks. We mustn't scream at each other. The walls in this house have ears. But, Greg, that's the first time I've heard you raise your voice in a long time. A crack in the wall of composure? I think that's a good sign. A sign of nerves in a player on the defensive. It just hasn't happened yet, Maggie. What? The click I get in my head when I've had enough of this stuff to make me peaceful. Now, will you do me a favor? Maybe I will. What favor? Just, uh, just keep your voice down. I'll do you that favor. I'll speak in a whisper, if not shut up completely. If you will do me a favor and make that drink your last one till after the party. What party? Big Daddy's birthday party. Is this Big Daddy's birthday? Oh, you know this is Big Daddy's birthday. No, I don't. I forgot. Well, I remembered it for you. Good for you, Maggie. Look, you just have to scribble a few lines on this card. You scribble something on the card. No, it's got to be your handwriting. It's your present. It's got to be your handwriting. I didn't get him a present, Maggie. Well, I got one for you. Then you write something on the card. And have him know you didn't remember his birthday? I didn't remember his birthday. But you don't have to prove you didn't. I don't want to fool him about it. No! You've got to! I don't have to do anything. 
thing I don't want to do. Now, you keep forgetting the conditions on which we agreed to say I'm living with each other. I'm not living with you. We occupy the same cage. Get away. You've got to remember the conditions agreed upon. They're impossible Why conditions. Why don't you? Hush. Hush. Who's out there? Is there somebody at the door? Uh, may I enter a moment? Oh, it's you. Sure, May. Come on in. Brick, is this thing yours? Why, sister woman, that's my Diana trophy. Won it at the intercollegiate archery contest on the Old Miss campus. Well, it's a mighty dangerous thing to leave exposed around a house full of normal red-blooded children attracted to weapons. Normal red-blooded children attracted to weapons ought to be taught to keep their hands off things that don't belong to them. <laughs> oh, Maggie, honey. If you had children of your own, you know just how funny that was. Now, will you lock that thing up and put the key out of reach? Sister woman, nobody's plotting the destruction of your kitties. How's the injured ankle, Britt? Doesn't hurt. Just stitches. Oh, my. Oh, Brick. Brick, you should have been downstairs for supper. Kitties put on a show. Polly played piano, Buster and Sonny drums. And then they put out the lights. And Dixie and Trixie performed a toe dance in fairy costumes with sparklers. Oh, Big Donny beamed. He just beamed. Oh, I bet. Oh. Breaks my heart that we missed it. But, May, why'd you give dogs names to all your kitties? Dogs' names? Dixie, Trixie, Buster, Sunny, Polly. Sounds like four dogs and a parrot. Maggie, why are you so catty? Because I'm a cat. But why can't you take a joke, sister woman? Well, nothing pleases me more than a joke that's funny. Now, you know the real name of our kitties. Sonny's real name is Robert. Buster's real name is Saunders. Trixie's real name is Marlene. And Dixie's hey, real name is... Intermission over. <gasps> Intermission over? Oh, well, see you all later. Wonder what Dixie's real name is. Maggie, being catty doesn't help things any. Oh, I know. Why am I so catty? Because I'm consumed with envy. And eaten up with longing. Rick. I've laid out your Shantung silk suit from Rome and one of your monogrammed silk shirts. I'll put your cufflinks in it. Those lovely star sapphires I get you to wear so rarely. I can't get trousers on over this cast, Maggie. Yes, you can. I'll help you. I am not going to get dressed, Maggie. Will you just put on a pair of white silk pajamas? Yes. I'll do that, Maggie. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Don't mention it. Oh, Brick. How long does it have to go on? This punishment. Haven't I done time enough? Can I apply for pardon? Maggie, you are spoiling my liquor. You know what I feel like, Brick. I feel all the time like a cat on a hot tin roof. Then jump off the roof. Jump off of it. Cats jump off of roofs and land on their four feet uninjured. Oh, yes. Do it, for God's sake. Do it. Do what? Take a lover. I can't see a man but you. You with my eyes closed. I just see you. Why don't you get ugly, Brick? Why don't you get fat or ugly or something so I could stand it? Concert is still going on. Bravo, no next. What'd you lock that door for? To give us some privacy for a while. Son! 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 Don't make a fool of yourself, Maggie. I don't mind making a fool of myself over you. Well, I mind, Maggie. I feel embarrassed for you. Then feel embarrassed. But don't continue my torture. I can't live all alone. Let go, Under Maggie. These circumstances. Let go! I can't! I can't! Let go! What is it, Big Mama? I just got the most wonderful news about Big Daddy. I had to run up to What's this door doing locked for? Y'all think there's robbers in the house? Brick's dressing, Big Mama. He isn't dressed yet. That's all right. It won't be the first time I've seen Brick not dressed. Come on, open the door. Uh. Hey, 
Big Mama? Yeah, I come through Goopers and May's gallery door. Brick, where's Brick? Brick! So, hurry on out. I just got a second. I want to give you the news about Big... I hate locked doors at the house. I've noticed you do, Big Mama. But people have got to have some moments of privacy, don't they? No, ma'am, not my hat. What you took your dress off for? Oh, I thought that little sparkly dress looked so sweet on you, honey. <laughs> I thought it looked sweet on me, too. But one of my cute little table partners used it for a napkin, huh? and so... You know, May and Goop is so touchy about those children. Oh, thanks, Big Mama. That you just don't dare to suggest there's any room for improvement. Hey, yeah, hurry on out. Oh, shoot, Maggie. You just don't like children, that's all. I do so like children. Adore them. Well brought up. Well, why don't you have some and bring them up well then? Instead of all the time picking on Goopers and May's. Hey, Big Mama. Oh. Oh. Hold your horses and be down the jiffy. Yes, Son, can you hear me in there? We just got a full report from the laboratory of the Arsenal Clinic. Completely negative, son. Everything's negative. Right on down the line. <laughs> There's nothing at all wrong with them except some little functional thing called a spastic colon. Can you hear me, son? He can hear you, big mama. Why don't he say something then? God almighty, a piece of news like that ought to make him shout. It made me shout, I can tell you. Oh, I shouted and sobbed. I fell right down on my knees. <laughs> See the bruises where I hit my kneecap? Took both doctors to hold me back on my feet. <laughs> Big Daddy was furious. <laughs> oh, but ain't that wonderful news? I mean, after all the anxiety we've been through to get that kind of report on Big Daddy's birthday. Big <laughs> oh, will you hold those people down there? Don't let him go. Maggie, how's his ankle? Well, he broke it, Big Mama. Well, I know he broke it, honey. I mean, does it hurt him much still? Well, I I'm afraid I can't give you that information, Big Mama. You'll have to ask Brick if it hurts him much still. Big Mama, come on now. I'm coming. Especially if you can't wait no longer. Maggie. Is he? Shh, don't play so dumb. I mean, has he been drinking much of that stuff yet? Oh, I think he had a highball after supper. Don't laugh, honey. Some single men stop drinking when they get married and others start. Brick never touched That's alcohol. Not fair. Fair or not fair? I want to ask you a question. One question. Do you make Brick happy in bed? Why don't you ask if because he makes me I happy? I know in that bed. something is not ways. right. You are childless. And my son drinks. Come on, big mama. When a marriage goes on the rocks, the rocks are there. Right there. That's. Big Mama gone? She's gone. You know, our sex life didn't just peter out in the usual way. It was cut off short, long before the natural time for it to. And it's going to revive again, just as sudden as that. I'm confident of it. Look, Brett, how high my body stays on me. Nothing has fallen on me. Not a fraction. Other men still want me. My face looks strained sometimes, but I've kept my figure. And men admire it. But Alice's party for her New York cousins, the best looking man in the crowd followed me upstairs and tried to force his way in the patter room with me. Why didn't you let him, Maggie? Because I'm not that common, for one thing. Not that I wasn't almost tempted to. Would you like to know who it was? It was Sonny Boy Maxwell, that's who. Oh, yeah, Sonny Boy Maxwell. He used to be a good end runner, but he had a little injury to his back and had to quit. Well, he has no injury now and has no wife, and he still has a lech for me. Well, in that case, Maggie, I see no reason to lock him out of a powder room. Oh, I might cheat on you sometime, since you are so insultingly eager to have me do it. 
But I'm not going to give you a reason to divorce me for being unfaithful or for any other reason. Hell, Maggie, I wouldn't divorce you. You could leave me. Don't want to and will not. Besides, if I did, you don't have a cent to pay for it except what you get from Big Daddy. And he's dying of cancer. Well, Big Mama just said that he wasn't, that the report was okay. But tonight, they're going to tell her the truth about it. When Big Daddy goes to bed, they're going to tell her that he is dying of cancer. It's malignant and it's terminal. Does Big Daddy know it? Oh, hell. Do they ever know it? Nobody says you're dying. You have to fool them. They have to fool themselves. Why? 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 Because human beings dream of life everlasting. That's the reason. <laughs> Only most of them want it on Earth and not in Heaven. Why'd I put down my cigarette? I don't want to burn down the home place. At least not with May and Goopa and their five monsters in it. You know something? Big Daddy's made out no will. Big Daddy's never made out any will in his life. So this campaign's afoot to impress him forcibly as possible with the fact that you drank and I've borne no children. You know, I'm fond of Big Daddy. I'm genuinely fond of that old man. I really am, you know. I know you are. Because Big Daddy is what he is, and he makes no bones about it. He hasn't turned gentleman farmer. He's still a Mississippi redneck. I've always liked Big Daddy. Well, this is Big Daddy's last birthday. I'm sorry about it. But I'm facing the facts. It takes money to take care of a drinker, and that's the office I've been elected to lately. You don't have to take care of me, Maggie. Yes, I do. Two people in the same boat have got to take care of each other. At least you want money to buy more good liquor when that supply is exhausted. Or will you be satisfied with a ten-cent beer? You know, Brick, I've been so right down, disgustingly poor all my life. That's the truth. I'm not saying it isn't. I always had to suck up to people I couldn't stand because they had money and I was poor as Job's turkey. You don't know what that's like. Well, I'll tell you. It's like you would feel a thousand miles away from that drink and had to get back to it on your broken ankle without your crutch. That's how it feels. You have to suck up to relatives you Lace hated because they had money Lace and all you had was a bunch of hand-me-down clothes. Lace the dress that I married you in was my grandmother's wedding gown. Hi, Mrs. Brick. How you feeling? You can be young without money, but you can't be old without it. You've got to be old with money, because to be old without it is just too awful. That's the truth, Brick. Well, I'm dressed. I'm all dressed. Nothing else for me to do. You know, I've thought a whole lot about it. And now I know when I made my mistake. Yes. I made my mistake when I told you the truth about that thing with Skipper. Never should have confessed it. A fatal error telling you about that thing with Skipper. Maggie, shut up about Skipper. I mean it. Shut up about Skipper. You ought to understand that Skipper and I... You don't I... think I'm serious? You fooled by the fact that I'm saying this quiet? This time I'm going to finish what I have to say to you. Skipper and I made love, if love you could call it, because it made both of us feel a little bit closer to you. You see, you ask too much of people. Of me, of him, of all the poor, unlucky, damn fools that happen to love you. And there was a whole pack of them. Yes, there was a pack of them besides me and Skipper. You asked too much of people that loved you. You godlike creature. You superior being. And so we made love to each other. To dream it was you. Yes, 
Yes, yes, truth, truth. What's so awful about it? I like it. I think the truth is... Yeah, I shouldn't have told you. Skipper is the one that told me about it, not you. I told you. After he told me. Well, what does it matter? Little girl, Who? little girl. Bring everybody upstairs. Bring everybody upstairs. Bring them all upstairs. I can't stop myself. I'd go on telling you this in go front on. of them all if I, I had to. to. Bring them all upstairs. Because it's got to be told. And you, you never let me. Maggie, you've got to stop this. It was one of those beautiful, ideal things they tell about in the Greek legend. It couldn't be anything else. You being you. That's what made it so sad. That's what made it so awful. Because it was love that never could be carried through to anything satisfying or even talked about plainly. Brick, I tell you, you've got to believe me when I say I do understand all about it. I think it was noble. Can't you tell I'm sincere when I say I respect it? My only point, the only point I'm making, is life has got to be allowed to continue even after the dream of life is all over. Well, I remember when we double dated in college. Gladys Fitzgerald and Skipper and you and me. It was more like a double date between you and Skipper. And Gladys and I were just sort of tagging along as if it was necessary to chaperone you to make a good public impression. Maggie. You want me to hit you with this crutch? Don't you know I could kill you with this crutch? Good Lord, man. Do you think I'd care if you one did? One man has one great, good, true thing in his life. One great, good thing that is true. I had friendship with Skipper. You are naming it dirty. I am not naming it dirty. I'm naming it clean. I'm naming it so damn clean it killed poor Skipper. Brick, let me finish. I know. Believe me, I know that it was only Skipper that harbored even any unconscious desire for anything not perfectly pure between you two. You married me early that summer we graduated out of Old Miss. And we were happy, weren't we? We were blissful. We hit heaven every time we made love. That fall, you and Skipper organized the Dixie Stars. So you could go on being teammates forever. But something was not right with it. Me included, between you. Skipper began hitting the bottle. You got that spinal injury and couldn't play the Thanksgiving game in Chicago. Watch it on TV from attraction bed in Toledo. I joined Skipper. The Dixie Stars lost because poor Skipper was drunk. We drank together that night, all night, in the bath of Blackstone. And cold day was coming up over the lake. And we were coming out drunk to take a dizzy look at it. I said, Skipper, stop loving my husband or tell him he's got to let you admit it to him one way or another. He slapped me hard on the mouth, then turned and ran without stopping once, I'm sure, all the way back into his room at the Blackstone. When I came to his room that night, he made that pitiful, ineffectual little attempt to prove that what I had said wasn't true. From then on, Skipper was nothing at all but a receptacle for liquor and drugs. Who shot Cock Robin? I, with my merciful error, missed me. Sorry. I'm not trying to whitewash my behavior. God knows, Brick, I'm not good. But I'm honest. Give me credit for just that, will you please? And Brick, Skipper is dead. I'm alive. Oh, Maggie, Maggie. Maggie the cat is alive. I'm alive. Little girl, your mother or somebody should teach you to knock at a door before entering a room. Otherwise, people might think that you lack good breeding. What's Uncle Brick doing on the floor? I tried to kill your Aunt Maggie, but I failed and I fell. Little girl, will you pick up my crutch over there so I can get up off this floor? Yes. Give your uncle his crutch. He's a cripple, honey. He broke his ankle last night jumping hurdles on the high school athletic field. What were you jumping hurdles for, Uncle Brick? Because I used to jump, and people like to do what they used to do even after they stopped being able to do it. That's right. That's your answer. Now go away, little girl. Bang! 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 Stop that! You stop that monster! You little no-neck monster! 
You're jealous. You're just jealous because you can't have babies. You see, they gloat over us being childless, even in front of their five little no-neck monsters. Brick. Brick. I've been to a doctor in Memphis, a gynecologist. I've been completely examined, and there's no reason why we can't have a child whenever we want one. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? Yeah, I hear you, Maggie. But how in hell on earth do you imagine you're going to have a child by a man who can't stand you? That's a problem that I will have to work out. wrong with Big Daddy, but a spastic owner, I can tell you something. I was worried sick. I was half out of my mind. Brick, aren't you going to give Big Daddy his birthday present? Big Daddy, this is for you, from Brick. This is the biggest birthday Big Daddy has ever had. A hundred presents, bushels of telegrams from all over. What is it, Brick? Well, I bet you 500 or 50 the prick don't know what it is. Oh, the fun of having presents is not knowing what's in them till you open the package. Big Daddy, open your birthday present. Open it yourself. I want to ask Brick something. Uh, Come here, Brick. Brick, Big Daddy's calling you, baby. Tell Big Daddy I'm crippled. I can see you're crippled. I want to know how you got crippled. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, look. Oh, look oh, at that. It's a casual robe. Oh, why, Maggie, you sound surprised. I never saw one before. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> why is it funny? I just don't see how you can be so surprised when you bought it yourself in Lowe's scenes last Saturday. Quiet. Sister woman, your talents are wasted as a wife and mother. You really ought to be with the FBI. I said quiet. Brick. Now tell me if what they tell me is true. You done some jumping last night on the high school athletic field? Brick, Big Daddy's talking to you, sir. That's what they told me, too, Big Daddy. Was it uh, jumping or something else you was doing out there? Uh, what, what was it you was doing out there at 3 a.m., taking some woman on that center track? Big Daddy, you're off the sick list now, and I will not excuse it's you for what? talking so Quiet! fast. I asked you, Brick, what you was doing last night in that center track. Thought maybe you was pursuing some other well-known sport and tripped in the heat of the chase, is that it? <laughs> oh, sir, I don't think so. Dog boy, hmm. let's you and I take a stroll on the veranda. Now, what the hell was you doing out there at 3 o'clock in the morning? Jumping the hurdles, Big Daddy, running and jumping the hurdles. But those high hurdles have gotten too high for me now. Because you was drunk? Sober, I wouldn't have tried to jump the low ones. 
Big Daddy, blow out the candles on your birthday cake. I want to propose a toast to Big Daddy Collins on his 65th birthday. Stop it. Quit big this. Daddy. Big Daddy, I will not allow you to talk that way. I'll birthday or no birthday. the way I want to on my birthday, Ida, or any other damn day of the year, and anyone here that don't like it knows what they can do. Oh, you don't mean that. Oh, what makes you think I don't mean it? I just know you don't mean that. You don't know my damn thing you never did. Big Daddy, you don't mean that. Oh, yes, I do. Oh, yes, I do. I put up with a whole lot of bull around here because I thought I was dying, and you thought I was dying, and you started taking over. Well, you can stop taking over now, Ida, because I ain't going to die. Dad, I've never seen you act like this before. I went I... through all that laboratory and exploratory operation and all, just so I would know if you or me was boss here. Well, now it turns out that I am, and you ain't, and that's my birthday present and my cake and my champagne because for the last three years you've been gradually taking over bossing no, talking sashaying your fat old body about no. the place i made i made this place and there's nothing wrong with me but spastic all made spastic i guess by disgust all the lies and liars I've had to put up with and all the hypocrisy I've lived with all these 40 years you and me been no. living together blow no, out the candles on your birthday Daddy, no. I, go on, purse up I, your fat lips, take a deep Daddy. breath and blow it out! Daddy, no, I don't. <laughs> what the hell's the matter with you, woman? In all these years you never believed that I loved you. Huh? And I did. I did so much. I did love you. I even loved your hate and your hardness, big daddy. Well, it'd be funny if that was true. Brett? Hey, Brett? I didn't call you, Maggie. I called Brett. I'm just delivering him to you, Big Daddy. Why'd you do that? Do what, Big Dad? Wipe her kiss off your mouth as if she'd spit on you? I don't know. I wasn't conscious of it. That woman of yours got a bit of shape other than Goopers. Somehow they both got the same look about her. It's funny you and Gooper being so different, you both pick out the same type of woman. Both of us married into society, Big Daddy. <laughs> Bull. <laughs> I uh, wonder what gives them that same look. Well, they're sitting in the middle of a big piece of land, Big Daddy. 28,000 acres is a pretty big piece of land, so they're squaring off on it. Each determined to knock a bigger piece of it off than the other whenever you let it go. <laughs> I got a surprise for those women. I ain't gonna let it go for some time yet. <laughs> That's right, Big Daddy. You just sit tight and let them scratch each other's eyes out yeah. there. <laughs> you better will. <laughs> I'm saying that uh, wife Goopers is a good breeder. You gotta admit she's fertile. Why, at dinner tonight, they, she had them all set down at table and they had to put two extra leaves on the table to make room for them. Five head of them now. Another one's are coming. Yep. Number six is coming. There's <laughs> a six. Hell, she'll... Probably drop a little next time. <laughs> Someone out there by that door. Hey, hey! Someone interested in what we say to each other. Go up! Did you call Goofy, Big Daddy? Oh, it was you. Uh, do you want Goofy, Big Daddy? No, and I don't want you. I want a little privacy around here so I can have a confidential talk with my son, Brick. I hate eavesdroppers. I don't like any kind of sneaking a spire. Big Daddy. You stood on the wrong side of the moon. It's in your shadow. I was just walking away. You was just nothing but spying on you know what. Oh, 
Sorry, Daddy. I don't know why you're always so unkind for some reason to those who really shut love up, you. Shut up, shut up, shut up. I'm going to take you and Gooper out of that room next to theirs. None of your damn business what goes on in there, not between Brick and Maggie. I'm going to take you out of there. I hate sneaking and spying. It makes me puke. They listen, do they? Yeah, well, listen, I'll make a report to Big Mama on what goes on in there between you and Maggie. Say you don't sleep with her. That you sleep on the sofa. Is that true or not true? You don't like Maggie? Get rid of Maggie. What are you doing there now? Fresh hand up my drink. Son, you know you got a real liquor problem? Yes, sir. Is that yes, why you I quit uh, sports announcing? Yes, Because sir. of this liquor problem? Yes, sir, I guess so. Oh, don't guess about it, son. It's too important. Yes, sir. Listen to me. Don't look at the damn chandelier. Something else we picked up out of that far sail in Europe. Life's important. Hold on to it. Now, a man who drinks is throwing his life away. Now, don't do it. Hold on to it. There ain't nothing else to hold on to. Hey, uh, let's come in here and talk. The walls have ears in this place. All right, Big Daddy. So you quit? Yes, sir. How did that come about? Some disappointment? I don't know. Do you? Hell, how should I know if you don't? I just got out there and found I had a mouthful of cotton. I was always two or three beats behind what was going on on the field, so I, uh... Quit. Yes, quit. Son? <coughs> took a little too much smoke. Out yeah, you're a little light-headed. Yeah. Why is it so damn hard to talk? Yeah. Nice, peaceful sound and clock. Like to hear it all night. We bought that clock that summer we went to Europe. Me and Big Mama on that damn cook's tour. Never had such an awful time in my life. That Europe is just one big auction. That's all it is. That bunch of worn-out places, why, well, it's just a big fire sale. Big Mama went wild in it. Bought, bought, bought. Why, well, half the stuff she bought still crated up in the cellar. <laughs> Underwater last spring. <laughs> Lucky I'm a rich man. <laughs> yes, sir, Bob, I'm a mighty rich man, Brick. I'm a mighty rich man. Do you know how much I'm worth? Guess, guess how much I'm worth, Brick. Yeah. Close on 10 million in cash and blue chip stock. Outside of 28,000 of the richest acres this side of the Valley Nile. Yes, sir, Bob. <laughs> One thing else I remember out there. What's that, Big Daddy? Morocco. Them Arabs. Well, I remember one day in Marrakesh, that old walled Arab city, I was uh, sitting down on an old broken down wall to have a cigar. It was fearful hot out there. And this Arab woman stood in the middle of the road and looked at me till I was embarrassed. She stood stock still in the middle of that dusty, hot road and looked at me till I was embarrassed. But listen to this. She had a little naked child with her. A little naked girl with her. Barely able to toddle. And after a while, she set the child down on the road and whispered something to her and gave her a little push. And this child come toward me. And she... Uh, Come toddling up to hell. Makes you sick to remember a thing like that. It stuck out its hand and tried to unbutton my trousers. That child was not yet five. Do you believe me or do you think I'm making this up? I went back to the hotel and I said to Big Mama, get packed. We are clear now to this country. You 
You sure are shooting the breeze here tonight, Big Danny. Mm. Been quiet here lately, not spoken a word, just sat, stared into space. Something heavy weighing on my mind. But tonight, that load has took off me. Sky looks different to me. You know what I like to hear most? What? Solid quiet. Perfect, unbroken quiet. Why? Because it's more peaceful. You two talking to me? Seem mighty anxious to have me shut up. Well, sir, you see, uh, every so often you say to me, uh, Brick, I want to have a talk with you. But when we talk, nothing materializes, nothing is said. You sit in a chair and gas about this and that. I look like I listen. I try to look like I listen, but I don't listen much. Communication is awful hard between people. Between you and me. <sighs> you ever been scared? Have you ever felt real terror of something? Had what, Big Daddy? Had what? Cancer. Thought that old man made of bones and laid his cold and heavy hand in my shoulder. Well, you sure kept a tight mouth about it, Big Daddy. Uh, pig squeals, man keeps tight mouth about it. I wonder if... Uh, what, Big Daddy? Whiskey highball would uh, injure this spastic condition. Oh, sir. Might do it some good. <laughs> Boy, the sky's open. Yeah. Yes, sir, it's open again. <laughs> it's open, boy. It's open. <laughs> you feel better, Big Daddy? Better? Hell, I can breathe. <laughs> oh, my life has been like a closed up fist. Bounding, smashing, driving. Now, loosen up. Those closed up fists and touch things. Easy with well. You know what I'm contemplating? No, sir. What are you contemplating? <laughs> Pleasure with women. <laughs> I'll tell you something you might not guess, Brett. I still have desire for women. And this is my 65th birthday. Well, I think that's mighty remarkable, Big Daddy. Yeah. Remarkable. Admirable. Yeah, yeah damn right, boy. <laughs> it's a remarkable and admirable both. <laughs> I realize now I never have me enough. I let too many chances slip by because of uh, scruples about them. Scruple. Convention. Bull. <laughs> Took the shadow of death to make me see it. And now that shadow is lifted, I'm going to cut loose and uh, have, have me, what do they call it, uh, have me a ball? Eh? A ball. <laughs> That's right, boy. A ball, a ball. <laughs> you know, I, I slept with Big Mama, I says, let's see, uh, five years ago, I was 60, she was 58. And never even liked it, never did. All I ever ask of that woman is she leave me alone. But she can't admit to herself. She makes me sick. So, reason for that is that I slept with her too many years. I should have quit much sooner, but that old woman, she never had enough of it. And I was good and bad. Never should have wasted so much of it on her. See, you only got just so many in you. And every one of those is numbered. Well, I've got a few left of me. <laughs> Just a few. <laughs> and I'm going to pick me a good one to spend them on. <laughs> I'm going to pick me a choice one. I don't care how much she costs. I'll cut.
cover her with minx. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll strip her naked and cover her with minx, choke her with diamonds. I'll strip her naked, choke her with diamonds, cover her with minx, and love her up from hell to breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> that's not that. That that big devil up there. Oh, shoot, them two drips. <laughs> Boy, I'm, I'm happy, son. Rick, boy. I'm happy, boy. I'm, I'm happy. Hey, well, well, why are you uh, so restless? Why are you? You're, you got ants in your britches. Yes, sir. Why? Something hasn't happened. What hasn't happened? Click. You just click? Yes, click. What click? Mechanical thing. It's a click that I get in my head that makes me peaceful. But it don't happen except when I'm alone and talking to no one. You've got a long, long time to be alone and talk to no one. But right now, you're talking to me, at least I'm talking to you. And you're going to sit right there until I tell you the conversation's over. Big Daddy, this talk is like all the other talks we've ever had. It's always the same. You say you want to talk to me, but you don't have a thing to say to me. It's painful. All right, let it be painful, but don't you get up from that chair. I'm going to remove this crutch. I can hop on one foot, and if I fall, I can crawl. If you ain't careful, you're going to crawl right off this plantation. And then, sonny boy, you're going to have to hustle your drinks off Skid Row. That'll come, Big Daddy. No, it won't, you're my son. I'm not going to let it. I straighten out myself. Now I'm going to straighten out you. Dad! What the hell are you doing in here? Why are you shouting like this? I can't Get stand it. Get out of here. Oh, hell. Oh, hey, what do hey. you think you Oh, oh, oh. Leave me alone. Oh. oh. Give me that crutch, Big Daddy. Why do you drink? Don't know. Give me my crutch. You better think why you drink. I'll give up drinking. Will you give me my crutch so I can get Just up off this tell floor? Me why you drink? Why do you throw your life away as if it was something disgusting you picked up off the street? I'm in pain, Big Daddy. I stepped on this oh, foot. I'm glad you're not too numb with the liquor and you to feel some pain. Just spilled my drink. Ah, well, I'll make a bargain with you. I'll pour you one myself. I'll pour the liquor myself and hand it to you. Tell me why you drink. I'll do that. Why do I drink? Yeah. Give me a drink and I'll tell you. You tell me first. I'll tell you in one word. What? Disgust. Now, how about that drink? What are you disgusted with? You gotta tell me that first, otherwise just being disgusted don't make no sense. Give me my crutch! You heard me, tell me what I asked you first. I told you. What? I said to kill my disgust. Disgust with what? Tell me what you're disgusted with, I'll pass you the liquor. You strike a hard bargain. You want liquor that bad? <sighs> yeah. I want it that bad. If I give you a drink, Brick, will you tell me what it is you're disgusted with? Yes, sir. I will try to. Have you ever heard the word mendacity? Sure. One of them five dollar words cheap politicians throw back and forth at each other. You know what it means? Well, don't it mean lion and liars? Yes, sir. Lion and liars. Someone been lying to you, Brick? Hey, big daddy, the kid is a shouting for you out there. Keep out, Cooper! Excuse me. Who's been lying to you, Brick? Margaret been lying to you? Has your wife been lying to you about something, Brick? Not her. That wouldn't matter. And who's been lying to you? What about? No one person, no one thing. Then lie. what? What then, for God's the sake? Whole, whole thing. What are you rubbing your head for? You got a headache? No, sir. I am trying... To you concentrate, but you can't, because your brain's all soaked in liquor. Wet brain! What do you know about this mendacity thing? I could write a book on it. Don't you know that? I could write a book on it and never cover the subject. Think of all the lies I gotta live with. 
Pretenses, ain't that mendacity? Having to pretend something you don't think or feel? Like for Big Mama? <laughs> Gooper, May, Church. Boys, the daylight out of me, but I go. Clubs, Elks, Masons, Rotary, Ball. You, uh, I do like, for some reason, uh, I'll always uh, respect, affection. You and being a success as a planter is all I've ever had any real feeling for my whole life. That's the truth. I've had to live with mendacity. Why can't you? Hell, you got to live with it. Ain't nothing else to live with except mendacity. Is there? Yes, sir, there is something else that you can live with. What's that? <laughs> that ain't living, that's dodging away from life. I want to dodge away from it. Why don't you kill yourself, man? I like to drink. I'm sorry, Big Daddy. You ain't as sorry as I am. I was thinking about you a while back. Should I, should I not give you this place when I go? Uh, since I hate Gooper May, there are five little monkeys all say, why should I turn over 28,000 of the richest acres this side of the Valley Nile to not my kind? Hmm. Well, why in hell on the other hand, Bray? Should I subsidize a damn fool on the bottle? Liked or not liked? Maybe even love? Why should I do that? Subsidize worthless behavior, rot, corruption? I understand. But you don't care. No, sir. I don't care. I think you're passing the buck. You know many drinking men? I've known a few of that species. Could any of them tell you why he drank? Yep, you're passing the buck. With words like mendacity, when you gotta use that kind of language about a thing's not a proof bull and I ain't buying any. I had to give you a reason to get a drink. You started drinking. When your friend Skipper died. What are you suggesting? I ain't suggesting nothing, but uh, Gooper and me did suggest it was something not quite right. Not right? Yeah, well, not quite normal. Indeed. They suggested that, too? Well, I uh, thought that was Maggie's suggestion. No, sir, not me. Who else's suggestion is it? Well, is it yours? What now? How many others thought Hold that... on a minute, son. I knocked around my time. What's that got to say? Hold on. I bummed. I bummed. Who said Who else? Shut up! I slept in hobo jungles, railroad wise, flop houses in all cities. I saw all things and understood a lot of them till 1910. When I hopped off a yellow dog freight car half a mile down the road, slept in a wagon of cotton outside the gin. Jack Straw, Peter Cello took me in, hired me to manage this place, which grew into this one now. When Jack Straw died, old Peter Cello just quit eating like a dog does when his master's dead and died too. Hell. I'm only trying to tell you I understand. Skipper is dead. I have not quit eating. No. Just started drinking. You think so too. Yeah. You think so too. Come on now. You think Skipper and I did things. Now, why is that what you so think of Skipper? Right, you is that what you think of me? Now, here. You think now. that Skipper and me were a pair of dirty old men. Straw and a couple of sissies, a couple of quiz. Is that what you think? Give me a hand. No, I don't want some. I want yours. Get up. Why? 
Why can't exceptional friendship, real, real, deep, deep friendship between two men be respected as something it clean? It can. It, it does. It is for parents. sake. Skipper and I had a clean friendship mm. practically all our lives until Maggie started that idea you're talking about. Normal? No. It was too rare to be normal. Anything true is too rare to be normal between people. Uh, maybe he put his hand on my shoulder once in a while or I put mine on his. Maybe even when we were touring pro football, shared the same hotel rooms, we'd reach out between the space between the two beds and shake each other's hands and say goodnight. Big Daddy! Big Daddy! Yeah, it's hard to talk. Let's, uh, let's let it go, Big Daddy, let it go. No. Why did Skipper crack up? Why have you? All right, Big Daddy. We are finally going to have that real, true talk you've always wanted. Maggie declares that uh, Skipper and I went into pro football after we left Ole Miss because we were scared to grow up. Wanted to keep on tossing those long, long, high, high passes. They couldn't be intercepted except by time. The aerial attack that made us famous. So we did. We did. We kept it up for one season, that aerial attack. We held it high. Yeah. That summer, uh, Maggie laid the law down to me. She said, now or never. So I married Maggie. Here was Maggie in bed. Great. The greatest. That's something. She went on the road with the Dixie Stars. Put on a great show of being the world's greatest sport. Skipper uh, got some kind of fever, and I uh, got that injury. I had to watch our games on TV from a hospital bed. Saw Maggie sitting on the bench next to Skipper. And he was pulled out of a game for stumbles and fumbles. Burned me up the way she hung on his arm. I think that Maggie had always felt sort of left out, so... She took this time to work on poor, dumb Skipper. Poured in his mind a dirty... False idea that what we were, him and me, was a frustrated pair of old sisters like Jack Straw and Peter Ocello, who used to live in this room. Poor, dumb skipper. He, uh, he went to bed with Maggie to prove that that wasn't true. And when it didn't work out, he thought it was true. Oh, poor Skipper. He broke in two like a rotten stick. Nobody ever turned to a lush so fast. 
or die. So quick of it. Now you, you're satisfied. Are you satisfied? With what? That story. What's missing? There's something missing, ain't there? What did you leave out? Yeah. I left out a phone call I had from Skipper in which he made a drunken confession to me and on which I hung up. Last time we ever spoke to each other in our lives. You must have said something to him before you hung up. What could I say to him? Anything. Something. <laughs> just hung up. Yes, just hung up. Well, now we have tracked down the lie with which you are disgusted and which you are drinking to kill your disgust with, Bray. You have been passing the buck. You're disgusted with mendacity as disgust with yourself. You dug the grave of your friend and kicked him in it before you'd face the truth with him. His truth? Not mine. Okay, okay, his truth, but you wouldn't face it with him. Who can face the truth? Can you? you don't start passing the rotten buck again. But what about all of these birthday congratulations, these many, many happy returns of the day when everyone except you knows that there won't be any? Let's go, Big Daddy. Hey, let's go watch the fireworks. No one ain't going out nowhere. What was it you were starting to say? I don't remember. Many have returns when there won't be any. Oh, hell, Big Daddy, forget it. Where Come on out go? on the gallery and Finish watch the what you were saying before you cut off. Look, now, cut. Finish what you were saying! Leave the place to Cooper and me and the five little Some same little monkeys. You say I ain't leaving the place to Cooper They're all 28,000 acres of the richest I'm land on this side of the valley now. And I'll outlive you. I'll have to bury you and pay for your coffin. Sure. Many happy returns now. Find something. Cancer. Ambassador is the system we live in. Liquor is one way out, death is another. Oh, Big Daddy! The field hands are singing for you! Sorry, Big Daddy. My head don't work too good now, and uh, it's hard for me to understand how anyone could care whether he lived or died or anything, except whether there was liquor left in the bottle. I don't know. We've been friends. We've been friends is telling each other the truth. Oh, too much smell. 
burn fireworks. Wasn't it to feel a little bit sick to my stomach? Where is Big Daddy? Well, that's what I want to know. Where's Big Daddy gone? I don't know. I reckon he went to bed. Right, Big Mama. Now we can talk. What talk? What is this Come talk? Come on. Upstairs. Come on, Big Mama. Upstairs. I think Big Daddy's just wall out. He loves his family. He just loves having him around. I think he's remarkable. Yes, yeah, just remarkable. Y'all notice that supper he put away? Oh, he ain't just like a horse. Well, I sure hope he don't have to pay for it later on. What's that, Cooper? Well, Cooper says he hopes Big Daddy doesn't suffer later tonight. Oh, shoot, Cooper says, Cooper says. Why should Big Daddy suffer for satisfying a normal appetite? He had a big load taken off his mind tonight. Knowing he isn't doomed to what he thought it was doomed to. Bless his old sweet soul. Yes. Bless his old heart. When old couples have been together as long as me and Big Daddy, they, they get irritable with each other just from too much devotion. Isn't that so? Yes, of course it's so. Brick! Brick! Where's Brick? Outside. Drinking. I know he's drinking. I can see he's drinking. That you continually telling me the boy is drinking. Good for you, Big Mama. Other people drink, have drunk, and will drink. As long as they keep making that stuff and putting it in bottles. That's the truth. I never trusted a man that didn't drink. Gooper doesn't drink. Don't you trust Gooper? Why, Gooper, don't you drink? If I'd known that you didn't drink, I wouldn't have made that remark. At least not in your presence. Brick! He's still out on the gallery, Big Mama. I'll go bring him in so we can talk. I don't know what this mysterious... Family conference is all about. <laughs> Excuse me. What are you doing out here on the gallery, baby? I'm admiring and complimenting the man in the moon. Come on in, baby. They're getting ready to tell Big Mama the truth. I can't witness that thing in there. Big Mama needs you. I don't know what's wrong here. Y'all got such long faces. Oh, Cooper, honey, would you open that door let a little air circulate through here? Oh, Big Mama, I think we ought to keep that door closed. I just didn't think we ought to take any chance of Big Daddy hearing one word of this discussion. I swore nothing's going to be said in Big Daddy's house that he can't hear if he wants to. That boy's gone to pieces. He's just gone to pieces. Hey, you know, in my day, they used to have something they called the Keeley Cure for drinkers. Oh, shoot. Well, nowadays, I understand they just give him a tablet or two and it... Kills a taste for the stuff. Call him anti bus tablets. Brick doesn't need to take anything. He's just broken up over Skipper's dad. You all know how poor Skipper died? They gave him a big, big dose of that sodium ambitol stuff in the house. Then they called the ambulance. Then in the hospital, they gave him another big, big dose. Well, that and, and all the alcohol in his system for months and months proved too much for his heart. His poor little heart quit beating. Oh, I'm scared of needles. I'm more scared of a needle than a knife. I think more people have been needled out of this world than... Oh, Brick, my precious baby. Sorry, anybody else? No, sir. I wish you wouldn't. Wish you didn't have to, Big Mama. Just breaks my heart. Brick, go sit with Big Mama. I can't stand... Well, now that we're all assembled... We can talk. Just breaks my heart. Brick, go sit with Big Mama and hold her hand. You do that, Maggie. I'm a restless cripple. I gotta stay on my crutch. Why? Why are you all surround me like this? Why are you all staring at me like this, making signs at each other? Well, Big Mama. Is... Is there something... Something that I don't know? Yes. I want to know. Somebody must be lying to me. Come I want to know. Sit down, Big Mama. Sit on the sofa with me. Brick, what is come it? sit with me. What Mama. is it? I have never seen a more thorough examination than Big Daddy Pollock was given in all my experience with the Oxford Clinics. One of the best in the country. Well, the best, Bob, no. they were 99 and 9 tenths sure even before sure. they started. Sure of what? Sure of what? Sure of what? What? Mommy, be a brave girl. Cats. Cats. Now, you see, Big Mama, 
We had this piece cut off the growth, a specimen of Bro. tissue. Well, you told me, Daddy. Now wait. Let me you get. told me, Daddy. Let me let oh, the ball fall. There's nothing wrong with him, Zipsum. That's what, condition. That's what we told Big Daddy. We took this bit of tissue and had it run through the laboratory, and I, I'm sorry to say that the, the test on no. it was positive. No! It's malignant. Oh. Come on, Big Mama, you had enough. Why didn't you oh. cut it out of him? Involved too much, Big Mama. Too many organs affected. It's gone past the night. That's why he's so yellow, Let go of me, Nate Westbrook. I want my son. I want Ray. my only son. Did she say only son? What does that mean? Me? Well, God, he's your son. He's your first boy. Oh. Well, never like Daddy. Oh, that's not it's true. Now, Big Mama. It's a mistake. We're going to try to keep Big Daddy as comfortable it's as we can. I don't mind. It's my belief he has it's some pain already. He just won't admit he has it. That's a lot of them. They think if they don't admit to having the pain, they can sort of escape the fact. Yeah, that. they get sly about it, real sly. Goofy Now, shut up, man. Now, Big Mama, come on. Mama, Big Daddy, come on. Big Daddy, he's, he's got to be started on more feet. No! Nobody's going to give Big Daddy more feet. Mama, when that pain strikes, he's going to no. strike my heart, no. and Big Daddy's no. going to need that needle I to tell you, nobody's giving him more feet. Oh, no, Big Mama, you know you don't want Big Daddy to suffer. You know you don't. I'm going to leave all this stuff no. now. No, no. Keep your chin up, big mama. Now she's gonna keep both chins up, aren't you, mama? Now come on, mama, you stop this now. All right, Doc, we sort of appreciate it. I'm telling you, we're really off the good too. All right, Doctor may have a lot of this, mama, but he could be a bit more human about it. Now, come on, come on, big mama. Now, be, you be a brave girl, right? No. It's not true. I just know it is not true. Mama, those tests are infallible. Why are you so determined to see your daddy dead? I know what big mama means. Oh, do you? Yes, I think I do. Well, for a newcomer in this family, you sure do show a lot of understanding. Understanding is needed on this place. Uh, mama, you know, you've had a shock. Yeah, we've all had a yeah, shock. But, but we've got to be realistic. Big Daddy would never, never be never, foolish enough. He's gonna never to. leave this place in Big Daddy, without a bar of They're gonna leave this place in anybody's hands. No, no, Mama. Big Ma Daddy, Ma Ma you gotta die. be realistic, and now's the time. <laughs> May you get my briefcase out of my room, please? Yes, Cooper, uh, honey. So, <coughs> Mama, you listen to me, Mama. Look, I've always loved Big Daddy. I'm on quite well. I just never showed it. That's all. Uh, and I know Big Daddy's always been fond of me, and he never showed it neither. Here's your briefcase, Cooper, honey. <laughs> It's just that my relationship to Big Daddy is different from Brick's. Well, you're eight years older than Brick. I mean, you always had to carry more responsibility than Brick ever had to carry. All Brick ever carried was a football or a highball. May we let me talk, please? Oh, yes, honey. Now, Mama, a 28,000-acre plantation is a mighty big thing to have to run. Almost single-handed. You ran this place. You never ran this place. <laughs> You talk as if Big Daddy was dead and in his grave. You were on this place. You just helped him with a few business details at your law practice in Memphis. Oh, Mommy, Mommy, let's be fair. <laughs> Goof has devoted himself body and soul to keeping this place up for the past five years since Big Daddy's health started failing. Uh -huh. Well, Goober wouldn't say it, but Goober never thought of it as a duty. He just did it. And what did Brick do? Brick <laughs> kept living in his past glory at college. Yeah, still a football player. Who are you player. talking He's about a... now? Brick, a football player? He ain't a football player, and you know it. He's a sports announcer on TV and one of the best known in the country. I'm talking about what he was. Well, I wish you would stop talking about my husband. I have a right to discuss my brother with other members of my own family, which don't include you. Now, why don't you just get out there and drink with Brick? I have never seen such malice toward a brother. Well, what about his family? He can't even stand to be in the same room with me. This is a deliberate campaign of vilification and for the most disgusting and sort of reason on earth, and I know what it is. It's greed. I was greed. And greed. I was screaming. We only remain on this place because of Big Mama and Big Daddy. If it's true what they say about Big Daddy, we are going to leave here just as soon as it's over, not a moment later. Maggie, Maggie John, oh, I'm come sorry. and sit with me. Mama, precious Mommy. Oh, how beautiful I have touching this display of devil. Do you know why she's childless? She's childless because that big, beautiful athlete husband of hers won't go to bed with her. Well, you just won't let me do this in a nice way, will you? All right. Now, me and I have five kids and another one coming. Now, I don't give a damn whether Big Daddy likes me or don't like me or did or never did or will or will never. I'm, I'm just appealing to a sense of common decency and fair play. You want the truth? 
I have resented Big Daddy's partiality to Brick since the day the Brick was born. And the way I've been treated around here like I was, I was barely good enough to spit on it sometimes, but not even good enough for that. I am asking for a square deal. I expect to get one. But if I don't get one, if there are any peculiar shenanigans going on around here, behind my back or before me, well, I am not a corporation lawyer for nothing, because I know how to protect my interests. Oh, a late arrival. Oh, behold, a conquering hero comes. You know, he looks like he's been injured in a game. Yeah, it looks like he's going to have to warm the bench in the Sugar Bowl this year, Brett. <laughs> oh, was it the Rose Bowl that he made that famous run in? The punch bowl, honey. It was the punch bowl that cut glass. Punchbowl. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'll get my bowl. Stop that. You up. stop that. All of your eyes. Now, look, Mama, Mama. Now, you know I have to go back to Memphis in the morning to represent the Parkway State in a lawsuit. Do you, Cooper? Yes. Yeah. Now, that's why I'm forced to bring up a problem. Well, it's too important to be put off. Now, if Brick was sober, he ought to be in on Brick this. Brick is present. We're here. Good. Now, I want to give you this outline that my partner, Tom Bullitt, and me have drawn up. It is a sort of dumb trusteeship. Oh, that's it. You'll be in charge and dole out remittances, will now, you? this is just a preliminary outline, but it does provide a, a basis, a, a design, a possible feasible plan. Oh, yes. I bet it's a plan. It's a plan to protect the... Now, you listen to me. Ollie, you listen here. Go on. You put that thing away before it, grab it out of your hand, tear it right up. I don't know what the hell's in it. I don't want to know what the hell's in it. I'm talking in Big Daddy's language now. Brick, what is it Big Daddy always says? Big Daddy always says bull. That's right, bull. That's what I say too, bull. I'm his wife. I'm not his widow. I am still his wife. Nobody has taken nothing to Big Daddy lets go of it. And maybe possibly not even then. No, not even then. Show me the way to go home. I'm tired. Tonight, Brick looks just like he used to when he was a little boy. Just like he did when he played wild games. He used to come back to the house all sweaty and pink cheeked and sleepy with his red curls shining. Time goes by so fast. Nothing can outrun it. Death commences so early, almost before you have acquainted with life. You meet up with the other. We just gotta love each other, all of us, and stay close together, just as close as we can. Now that, especially now, such a black thing has come and moved into this place without invitation. Big Mama. Big Mama. You do hear me, don't you, son? Brick, he is you, Big Mama. He understands what you're saying. Oh, Brick, son of Big Daddy, Big Daddy does so love you. Do you know what would be his fondest dream come true? If before he passes on, if Big Daddy has to pass on, you would give him a child of yours, a grandson, as much like his son as his son is like Big Daddy. I know that's Big Daddy's dream. That's his dream. Can I come in? Uh... Heard some mighty loud talk. Sounded like something important was being discussed. What was all the powwow about? Why, nothing, Big Daddy. Uh, what is that uh, pregnant-looking envelope you're putting away so quick, uh, Gopa? It's uh, nothing, sir. Pretty much of nothing at all. Nothing, huh? Looks like uh, a lot of nothing, don't it? There's one more question I'd like to ask. What is the smell in this room? Do you notice it, Bray? Do you notice a powerful and obnoxious smell of mendacity in this room? Yes, sir. I think I do, sir. Nothing more powerful, is there? No, sir, there isn't. And nothing more obnoxious. Break agrees with me? Uh... Do you notice it, uh, Gupa? What's it? How about you, sister woman? Do you notice an unpleasant odor of mendacity in this room? Why, Big Daddy, I don't even know what that is. Why, you can smell it. Smells like death. <laughs> What's wrong with that fat woman over there, loaded with diamonds? 
Hey, what's your name? What's the matter with you, woman? She had a slight dizzy spell, Big Daddy. Ah, uh, you want to watch that, Big Mama? A stroke's a bad way to go. Rick, look. Big Daddy has on your birthday present to him. He's wearing your cashmere robe. The softest material I've ever felt. It's my soft birthday, Maggie. Not my gold one, not my silver one. It's just my soft one. Big Daddy, I haven't given you my present yet. But now I will. Now's the time for me to present it to you. I have an announcement to make. What announcement? Sparks announcement, Maggie. Announcement of life beginning. I have Brick's child in my body. And that's my birthday present to Big Daddy on this birthday. It's Big Daddy's dream come true. Uh. Want my lawyer in the morning, Cooper. Where are you going, Big Daddy? Going up in the roof, son, to the Belvedere, to look over my kingdom before I give up my kingdom. 28,000 acres, the richest land, this side of the Valley Nile. Sweetheart, sweetheart, can I go with you? Sweetheart. Brick, could you possibly spare me one small shot of that liquor? Help yourself, Gooper boy. I will. Of course, we know what this is. Now, be still, May. I will not be still. She made it up. Damn it, I said to shut up. Gracious, I didn't know that my little announcement was going to provoke such a storm. That woman is not pregnant. Who said she was? She did. Well, the doctor didn't. Doc Ball didn't. I haven't gone to Doc Ball. Then who'd you go to, Maggie? One of the best gynecologists in the South. Ah, uh -huh, I see. Well, may I have his name, please? No, you may not, Mr. Prosecuting Attorney. He doesn't have a name. He doesn't exist. Oh, he exists all right. And so does my child, Brick's baby. You can conceive a child by a man who won't sleep with you. May, sister woman, how do you know I don't sleep with Maggie? Because we occupy the next room and the walls ain't soundproof. Now... You don't imagine you could pull a trick like that on us to fool a darn man with hey, a... sister woman, not everybody makes much noise about love. Oh, I know that some people are huffers and puffers, but others are silent lovers. <gasps> Rick, I never dreamed you'd stoop to her level. I just never dreamed you'd stoop to her level. I don't think Brick will stoop to her level. It was the cotton bowl. <laughs> Do you hear that? Do you hear that, Cooper? It sounds like the pain is struck. Oh, God, see him. Yeah, come on, man. Let's leave these two lovebirds together here in their nest. Liar. We are just going to wait and see, because time will tell. Yes, sir, little brother. We are just going to wait and see. Thank you, Bray. It was gallant of you to save my face. There. The click. The click in your head that makes you peaceful, baby. Uh-huh. You know, Brick, I used to think that you were stronger than me and I was afraid to be overpowered by you. But now, since you've taken the liquor, you know, I guess it's bad. But now I'm stronger than you and I can love you more truly. Don't move that pillow. I'll move it right back if you do. Brick, I really have been to a doctor. And I know what to do and this is my time by the calendar to conceive. Yeah, I understand, Maggie. How are you going to conceive a child by a man in love with his liquor?
brick. I told a lie to Big Daddy. But we can make that lie come true. And when that's done, I'll bring you liquor back here. And we'll get drunk together. Here, in this place that death has come into. What do you say? What do you say? I admire you, Maggie. You weak people. You weak, beautiful people who give up with such grace. What you need is someone to take hold of you. Gently, gently, with love. And hand your life back to you. Like something gold you let go of. I do love you, Brit. I do. Wouldn't it be funny if that was true? <laughs>